To make a model of a character that can be posed, the model must consist of two parts. Like a human body, a skin on the outside, a mesh model, and on the inside, a skeleton that's called an armature. In this tutorial, I'll show you the fundamental principles of how the armature bends the skin mesh. Starting with the default cube, Change the view from perspective to orthogonal and change the view to the front view. I want to make a model of a pipe that will deform nicely when bent. I'm going to use the default cube. I'm going to press S to scale followed by Z for the Z direction. Press 6 and enter. Go into edit mode. Click loop cut and slide. When you get the purple line, you can use the mouse wheel to increase the number of cuts. I'm going to press 6 and enter. Drag to make the properties window wider. Click the modifiers button. Click add modifier subdivision surface. Increase the number of subdivisions. If I zoom in with the mouse, we see we've got a nice even mesh of square shaped faces. If I increase the number of subdivisions, we've got a dense mesh that should deform nicely. Add a loop cut at the top. Click, slide to the top, click. Add a loop cut at the bottom. Click, slide to the bottom, click to square the ends off and go into object mode. In the add menu, add armature single bone. Tick x-ray so we can see it. Press S to scale followed by six and enter. Press G to grab, followed by Z for the Z direction, minus 6, and enter. Go into edit mode. Press E to extrude. Z for the Z direction, 6, enter. You make an armature in edit mode, and you then pose it in pose mode. When you extrude a bone, the new bone is the child of the previous bone, and the head of the new bone is connected to the tail of the previous bone. When I press G to grab, because a child can't move the parent, and because it's connected, all the top bone can do is rotate. When the top bone rotates, I want the cylindrical pipe object to bend with it, but at the moment, the armature and the pipe object are not linked in any way. So we know which bone is which. I'm going to give them meaningful names. Click the bone button. I'm going to call the top bone top bone. I'm going to call the bottom bone root bone. And I'm going to reset the pose, pose, clear transform rotation. And we're going to come back to this point. So I'm going to do file, save as, and save. We can make the armature deform the pipe simply by adding the armature modifier to the pipe. Select the pipe, click the modifiers button, click add modifier armature. In the object field, select the armature. Now when we pose the bone, the pipe is deformed. I'm clicking the object data properties button for the armature so that I can change the display from octahedral to stick. Now we can better see this strange deformation. Now the order you apply modifiers is important. If I select the pipe and click the modifiers button, the subdivision surface modifier is applied first, followed by the armature modifier. If I click the up arrow, now the armature modifier is applied first and we get a much better deformation. And if I tick preserve volume, we get a better deformation again. There are two systems used to bind a mesh object like the pipe to an armature, bone envelopes and vertex groups. Ticking vertex groups has no effect because simply adding an armature modifier doesn't set up vertex groups. The system being used at the moment is bone envelopes. Selecting a bone and clicking the object data properties of the armature, I can change the display to see the envelope, go into the bone properties and opening up the deform panel. Scrolling down, I can change the size of the envelope. 
I can change the strength of the envelope and the shape of the envelope. Simply adding the armature modifier links the armature to the mesh for deforming, but not for movement. If I go into object mode, press G to grab and move the armature, the pipe doesn't follow. Similarly, if I select the mesh, press G to grab, the armature doesn't follow. I can hold down shift and select both and press G to grab and move them both that way. And I could set up a parent-child relationship. The most commonly used system is the vertex groups system. And to show you how to configure that, I'm going to go back to the point where I had named the bones. To set up a parent-child relationship, select the pipe, hold down the shift key and select the armature, hold down the control key and press P. Now the highlighted option, Blender does the most work. Not only does it make the armature, the parent and the mesh, it adds the armature modifier it creates vertex groups for each bone and it sets automatic weights for the vertices in the groups. Select the pipe, click the object data properties. We see the vertex group created for each bone. Go into edit mode, press A on the keyboard to deselect. With the top bone highlighted, click select and we see the vertex group for the top bone, all the vertices surrounding the top bone, and each vertex has been allocated an automatic weight. Press A on the keyboard to deselect, highlight the root bone and click select, and we see the vertex group for the root bone. Go into object mode, select the top bone, press G to grab and bend the pipe. Again, the pipe doesn't deform very well due to the order of the modifiers. Select the pipe, click the modifiers button. I'm going to move the armature modifier to the top of the stack, click the up arrow. And again, I'm going to click preserve volume and decide if you want it on or off. One of the reasons the vertex groups system is generally preferred over the bone envelope system is because of weight paint mode. The red represents where the selected bone has an influence weighting of one over the vertices. Those vertices will try to follow the bone. The blue represents where the selected bone has an influence weighting of zero over the vertices. Those vertices will ignore the movement of the bone. In weight paint mode, I can paint a weighting of one onto vertices. As I paint, these vertices were not affected by the top bone, but as I paint, they are. They would like to go to the 45 degree angle that the top bone is at, but they are also influenced by the bottom bone. I can paint with any value weight. I could set the weight to 0.5 and paint. Now, these vertices are less influenced by the top bone. And as I carry on up to the top, they are less influenced by the top bone, but there's no competition with any other bone. Finally, if I paint with a weight value of zero, the bottom vertices will again not be influenced by the top bone. And if I carry on all the way up to the top, the top bone will not have any influence on any vertex. That's the end of this tutorial. You'll find many more tutorials and other resources at my website www.freemovies.co.uk at the Blender channel there. Thanks for watching and goodbye.